Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Atlas Network's board chair, Debbie Gibbs. Kia ora. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Haere mai, welcome. I'm Debbie Gibbs and I am the chair of the board of directors of Atlas Network. Thanks. You've just seen what an amazing work our team does and I am so proud of them. There are a lot of great things about this organisation and this movement but there are only two things that I truly love. The ideas and the people. You are my people. And what an amazing, fabulous tribe you all are. Amongst you, there are some truly accomplished rock stars. Here tonight is Larry Moan, longtime head of Manhattan Institute, who won the Fisher Achievement Award last time we met in person in 2013. And the irrepressible Ron Manners is having breakfast in Australia, live streaming the broadcast of this program in cyberspace, where we all were this time last year when we presented him with this award. There are people here who are ama with amazing ideas. There are effective communicators, generous donors and mentors, incredible creators, and awe-inspiring go-getters. And then there is the one on whose shoulders we all stand and whose coattails we ride. The relentless overachiever that I am thrilled to announce as the winner of this year's Fisher Achievement Award. A man I am so privileged to call my friend and honored to work with as a colleague. Atlas Network's very own extraordinary Dr. Tom Palmer. Play the video, please. The Sir Anthony Fisher Achievement Award celebrates individuals who've had a transformative, positive impact on the freedom movement. People whose virtues, scholarship, courage, generosity, and leadership have set an example for each of us to aspire to and who've pushed our community to achieve bigger things. No one is more deserving of the award than Tom Palmer, a scholar extraordinaire, someone who's devoted to coaching young classical liberals so they can carry the torch in the years ahead. A man who put himself into harm's way to create a liberty movement behind the Iron Curtain, inside war-torn parts of the Middle East and Central Asia. Tom is simply amazing. Thanks to Tom Palmer and his, and his support, we were able to create a very committed and very engaged network of free markets, activists and defender in this, in the MENA region. He believed in us from day one, supporting us with good advice, helping us to persuade renowned speakers that traveling all the way to Russia from all parts of the world was worth it to support freedom fighters in Eastern Europe. He's always willing to do what needs to get done. I realize he's one of the rare educators that understands that economics, philosophy, and history are not three separate subjects. It's one great big subject. And Tom rolls it along like a giant snowball. It gets bigger as it goes, and he gathers more admirers and followers as he goes. I think Tom is someone where we can always go back and depend on. No matter how difficult uh, the situation that we're living through, uh, becomes. We know that Tom has our back. There are so many of us across Latin America, from Argentina and Chile to Venezuela and Colombia and beyond, who take great inspiration from Tom Palmer. He's amazing. He doesn't compromise for the sake of convenience, and this is something that uh, has, has stuck with me as a moral example. One of the temptations that we have, I think, is to imagine that um, that if we're on the on the right side of history, that we must then also, um, you know, know the right answers for for every situation. But there's a lot of complexity and nuance in the world, um, and, uh, and and Tom has uh, the patience and the sort of depth of, of understanding 
um, to help all of us see a little bit more openly. Everything I put in my book, The Libertarian Mind, I either got from Tom Palmer or from the books he told me to read. His belief in freedom, his understanding of and ability to articulate the essence of freedom, his respect for everyone, whatever their background, situation or abilities, his compassion for those who are in need of help, his willingness to help anyone and to share his knowledge and experience with them. All I have and all uh, and who I am at the moment is because of the direction of Dr. Palmer, which I can't forget until the last moment uh, of, of my life. What Tom brought with him was this mix of love for books and the ideas in those books and his care for people. This combination, in a way also that was already an atlas, but he definitely brought it to a new level. What it's meant to be in the freedom movement and the things that have mattered to us since we first got started have changed a lot. The world has changed a lot. Um, and I think it's probably mattered a lot that we have people like Tom to model what it means to really care about the freedom of other people. The most important of it all is the human-to-human -human connections he's built for Atlas. Not just a network of organizations, but of people. He is an ideal mentor, coach, and friend. Someone who will be there for you no matter what. So I'm so grateful that I work with someone who who keeps the, keeps the fire um, burning for all of us so that um, we're proud of, of, of what we've accomplished and we have appetite for so much more. Robert Bukada thanked Tom for his commitment, for his courage, and for his kindness. Tom, no one could better deserve the Sir Anthony Fisher Award than you can. Uh, you have done more for liberty than most people could ever realize you have done and this award is the most appropriate thing for you to be receiving. Congratulations. Congratulations, Tom, for this award. This is truly your night. I am really, really looking forward to having you in Asia to do some wonderful things together. Thank you so much for including me in your celebrations today. Big, big hug to you. Mwah. We certainly look forward to seeing you back in Perth soon. And I know one thing for sure, I'll learn a lot every time I spend time with Tom Park. We all know that the only thing that matches Tom's passion for freedom is his passion for cats. So one suggestion is to rename the award in his honor, the Lib Perti Award for Tom Palmer. My only criticism of Dr. Palmer is that for a doctor with so many accolades, he sure doesn't have a lot of patience. We did mention that Tom likes puns, right? He loves to wear maybe everything except shirt and ties. And now, ironically, he's moved to Thailand. Congratulations, Tom, on receiving this much-deserved Anthony Fisher Achievement Award. Can't thank you enough, Tom, for all that you've added to my life and to the lives of thousands of others. With every best wish from your old friend, Agent W. So I don't really have a pun for Tom, but I thought to commemorate this, I wrote a limerick in his honor. With Tom, more often than not, his words are too clever to plot. Asides he will lob to make it our job to match quips with a pun or bon mot. Congratulations, Tom. Well deserved. Thank you for everything you've done and will be continuing to do for this cause that we love. As you can see, Tom has oodles of wit to go with his wisdom, and no one has done more to inspire people to the cause of freedom. So, while we don't usually honor our own, it is very appropriate that Tom Palmer received this distinguished award. Now, in past years, we've had a rather large trophy to hand to the winner. This year, we've done something different both to make it easier for him to get through customs and for him to take us with him on his incessant travels. And because one of the other virtues we admire in you, Tom, is your frugality. When Atlas Network's great benefactor, Don Smith, passed away two years ago, Tom noted that Don would pay for this entire freedom dinner 
and then take the bus home from our event rather than splurge on a taxi. Don wanted his dollars to go to Liberty. So this year, I am happy to present Tom with these elegant cufflinks that we've had custom made out of New York City bus and subway tokens. In memory of your late friend, Don Smith, and with our fond admiration for your awesomeness. The balance of what we've saved, the difference between a subway ride and a hulking trophy, is being transferred to the fund that we've raised for the heroes of the Afghanistan think tank, whose lives you personally helped to save from the Taliban in August. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friends, Farnell, let's have a huge round of applause for the recipient of the 2021 Sir Anthony Fisher Achievement Award, Dr. Tom G. Palmer. Thank you, Debbie, and thank you to my colleagues for the surprise video and the uh, my minor embarrassment that it caused. I'm, I'm so touched and so touched by these and the memory of our friend, uh, Don Smith. I'd like to thank also all of you for your involvement in and your personal investment in and your support of the Liberty Movement. I remember previous toasts at our Freedom Dinners, starting with the first one, 2004, with Jose Maria Aznar on the fifth anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. I'm not as powerful and moving an orator as the Spanish politician Jose Maria Aznar or the British politician Dan Hannon, nor as brilliant and certainly not as photogenic as the Swedish historian and fashion model Johan Norberg. But like them, I sometimes meditate on the meaning of liberty. So my toast this evening will consist of personal meditations on the virtues of liberty, and what it means to be a lover of liberty, whether we call ourselves classical liberals or libertarians or just liberals or something else. I'll start with a little story as a result of more than a decade of Adam Smith summer seminars that Atlas Networks sponsored and supported in a still communist-ruled country that I frequently visit, there's an active group of over 750 young members, young graduates, who have committed themselves to liberty. And they call themselves F Group. Some years ago, I gave talks to meetings of F Group. And when I asked the organizers, what does the name stand for, I got a smile. And the answer, well, the authorities know us as F Group. We know that the F stands for fun, friendship, and freedom. And those three values are very deeply connected. In English, they all begin with F, but that's just a coincidence because the concepts behind them really are a package. Now, when we speak of freedom, we don't intend what Thomas Hobbes called the perpetual and restless desire of power after power that ceaseth only in death. The liberty we seek is the kind of social order that was described by John Locke, who understood where there is no law there is no freedom. That's something I learned from experience visiting countries that did not have rule of law. Locke described what he called a liberty to order and dispose as one wishes, one's person, actions, possessions, and one's whole property 
within the allowance of those laws under which one is, and therein not to be subject to the arbitrary will of another, but freely follow one's own. It describes the liberty of people living together and cooperating voluntarily, each enjoying equally the rule of law and the rights of property, speech, exchange, contract, conscience, worship, expression, and locomotion. So that's freedom. Now let's turn to fun. That's the joy that we experience in cooperating and working together for our common goal of liberty for everyone. I know that joy, and I'm sure you do too. It's the joy of doing what is right, not as a burden, but as its own reward. And I've learned if the activity isn't rewarding, that is to say, if it's not fun, it's not sustainable. I've worked for the cause of liberty for more than 50 years, and I can tell you it's been fun. And it's made me very, very rich in experiences and in friendships to which I now turn. So friendship, which we could also call fellowship, is central to our movement for liberty. Illiberal movements, whether they're on the left or on the right, ground their friendship on the basis of having common enemies. The national socialist theorist Carl Schmidt put it very clearly. The specific political distinction to which political actions and motives can be reduced is that between friend and enemy. Schmidt's book, The Concept of the Political, is a core text of both the far left and the far right. Resentment, anger, rage, and hatred of their enemies form the foundations of their illiberal friendships. But real liberals, in contrast, can have friends without having to have enemies. On my recent airplane trips to visit and assist and enjoy fellowship with liberals in 10 Latin American and European countries, uh, ending in here, uh, I had the chance to reread Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics on the plane, the planes. Uh, and it's a great mixture of wisdom regarding happiness and friendship, as well as a lot of misunderstanding of markets and social order. Aristotle opens Book 8 by noting that friendship is inherent in those that are alike and kind to one another, and especially in human beings, which is why we praise people who are philanthropoi, friends to human beings. One might see in one's travel, too, that every human being is kindred to every other human being and a friend. Now, friendship and rejection of enmity and hatred are central to our liberal philosophy. Hatred leads so easily to collectivism, to fostering collective fellowship as a means of countering collective enemies. It's a fellowship of hatred, and it's poisonous to free societies. And I fear that such mutual hatred and loathing is rising in a number of countries, including the United States, as both sides of the political divide demonize each other. In contrast, we're joined in liberal friendship because of our mutual love for liberty, not because we hate other people. A great martyr for liberty perished miserably in 2017 in a prison administered by the Communist Party of China. His name was Lu Xiaobo. He was the second Nobel Peace Prize winner to die in prison. The other was Karl von Ossietzky, who died in 1938 in a National Socialist or Nazi concentration camp. In Lu's final statement, which I encourage you to go online at the Nobel Foundation and read, it was titled, I Have No Enemies and delivered to the court that sentenced him to prison. He said, 
Hatred can rot away at a person's intelligence and conscience. Enemy mentality will poison the spirit of a nation, incite cruel mortal struggles, destroy a society's tolerance and dignity, and hinder a nation's progress toward freedom and democracy. So when we argue for liberty, we should seek not to crush, defeat, humiliate, or destroy enemies, but rather to win friends for liberty. And the best victory you can have, I've learned over the years in an argument, is not when you hurt the other person, but when you hear the other person repeat your arguments six months or six years later. That's a much more satisfying kind of victory. So it's not hatred of others that moves us. It's positive love for the liberty of everyone. Joaquim Nabucco, the great Brazilian liberal abolitionist, exhorted us in his book on abolitionism, educate your children, educate yourselves in the love for the liberty of others. For only in this way will your own liberty not be a gratuitous gift from fate. You'll be aware of its worth, and you will have the courage to defend it. My Polish friends know how fond I am of the Polish heritage of loving the freedom of others, as expressed in their slogan, for our liberty and yours, which has characterized the Polish fight for liberty from 1831 to the present. To love your own liberty seriously, you must love the liberty of others. Moreover, as Aristotle noted, friends want what is good for their friends. And so it's natural that liberals of all countries, all regions, of any language or religion or creed, are dear friends to all other liberals because we love the liberty of everyone. And of course, that's going to be even stronger for those who love our liberty in return. Such liberal friendship is deep, and it gives us strength and courage and fortitude. I visited our friends in Afghanistan over the years, and I've always stressed to them, you are not alone. There are many friends around the world. We are with you. And when the brittle Republic of Afghanistan was overrun so quickly, the global network of liberals was with the liberals of Afghanistan. They are alive, and they are still working for liberty as a consequence. So our friends in our network from New Zealand and Greece and Brazil and India and Pakistan, Indonesia, Canada, the US, Germany, the UK and Turkey, all stepped up to help them. And the same has been true for people I've worked with in other countries, including China and Egypt and Russia and Iraq and Iran. They know that they are not alone, that we are with them. So our movement for liberty runs on friendship. And being with friends is joyous. We enjoy sharing stories and learning from each other, uh, telling bad jokes, catching up. But we remain friends as well with those who have been friends to us but can no longer reciprocate our friendship. Those who have given what they could for liberty and then passed away can no longer actively express their friendship for us. But we can and do and must for them. And I think often of the many who have preceded us and whose spirits remain active, even in this room. So friends of mine like uh, Priscilla Slocum and John Blundell, Manuel Ayao and Donald Smith, George Yeager and Andrea Rich, John Utley and Stephen Williams, and so many other old friends of liberty who have passed on, continue to inspire me with their generosity, their humility, their intellect, their wit, and their passion for liberty. What I, when I do what I can for liberty, I know that they are with me. And I hope they would be pleased. I also hope that, over the coming decades, I will prove myself worthy 
of this honor. So please join me in raising a glass to fun, friendship, and freedom. <laughs>